Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I like making my digital planners that I personally use on GoodNotes 5 but you can use on any note taking app that you have. This is not only a planner, it's also a bullet journal. I use it as both but you can personalize it to whatever you need. It comes with post-it notes, clickable tabs, a monthly layout with notes on the side as well as this weekly layout with top to do's as well as a notes slash extra box. To make the planner, we're going to be using the app Keynote today, but you can also use PowerPoint. First, click Create Presentation and choose the type of presentation that you want to make. We're going for either Basic Black or Basic White today because we're going to end up changing the background anyway. Next, you're going to delete any of the text boxes that are on your screen by just touching them and then the option to delete them should pop up. You can touch one text box and then touch the other one simultaneously to delete them together which saves a little bit of time. Next, click on the plus button and then go to the one with the square and the circle behind it and choose either the square or the square with the curved corners. I'm choosing the one with the curved corners because that's the look that I like better. This is going to be the cover of your notebook whereas the background of the side is going to be the table that you're working on. For the background, I'm choosing a wood background and if you want the exact one that I have, then just look up wood background, go to images, and save the first one to your photo album. Then back on Keynote, click the paintbrush icon, background, image, go to recent images, and choose the background that you just saved. Still in paintbrush, you're going to click on the square that we just added and choose a color by clicking fill. And again, this is going to be the cover of your notebook. Now go back to the plus sign and add the same shape that you added before, this time making it a little bit smaller than the last shape. Since I wanted the squared paper for my planner, I went into GoodNotes and took a screenshot of their squared paper and cropped it down so that the image would only have the paper in it. You can repeat the same exact step if you want it to be the dotted paper. Now go back into the paintbrush, click Fill, Image, Choose Image, Recents, and then choose the paper that you just took a screenshot of, or you can just leave it white. Now to add a line in between the pages to make it look more like a notebook, go back to the plus sign and choose the line and place it into the middle. If you like the spiral look better, then go to Safari and look up Spiral Notebook Springs PNG and save the first image that pops up. Now crop it down to the spring that you like the best and back on Keynote, go to the plus button, photos, and then choose from recents the spring that you just cropped down and fit it to the page. I personally don't like the spiral look as much, so I'm just going to stick with adding a straight line into the middle. As you can see, you can choose from a bunch of different strokes, and you can also change the color, which makes it look more realistic. So I'm choosing a lighter gray color, and then I'm choosing the third shadow available. You need to turn shadows on, so if you don't see a shadow right away, then just turn on the shadows. Now copy the slide by clicking the slide and then hitting copy, and then you can click directly back on the slide and click paste. We are now going to make the intro page to the planner. To do this, you'll need to make the second square that we added smaller so that it's just one page instead of two pages like it was before. I'm also going to change the color of it because I don't want it to be gridded for the intro page, so I'm just making it white. To add sticky notes to your planner, go to the plus button and then add a square to the planner. Click on the paintbrush, click fill, and then go to color to change the color of the post-it note. You can also resize it to your liking. For a more realistic look, I'm using the fourth available shadow for this medium-sized sticky note. I've also added two other different sizes of the sticky notes and I'm adding the second shadow to them. To add a title to your planner, double click on the page and type in whatever you want the title to be. Now select it and go to the paintbrush icon and you'll get a bunch of different options to make your font look the way that you want it to look. So you can change the font, you can change the color, you can even make it a gradient which is what I did. The first thing that I recommend that you do though is change it from label to title because this makes it so much bigger and easier to read. You can also choose to align it to the center or to the right or left hand side. This step is completely optional but I just went to the plus button and added some of these cameras because this is my YouTube planner as you can see. So I just did this to decorate my planner but you don't have to do this obviously. Please ignore the slides that I got added. We are now going to be adding the clickable tabs to our planner. For the planner that I showed you in the beginning, I actually used trees as the tabs, but here for the purpose of this video, I'm just using squares. You can use any shape that you want. I'm sure you guys know how to add shapes and change their colors by now, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about that again, but like I said, you just go into the plus button and choose the square and then go to the paintbrush to change the colors. To make the tab go under the page, make sure you've still selected the tab, go to arrange, which is still under paintbrush by the way, and go to the second to last position on the drag bar. Click on the tab again, copy it, and paste it so that you have as many tabs as you need. For my last planner that I showed you in the beginning, I believe I made about 24 tabs, 12 on each side. Using your Apple Pencil, you'll now want to label each of the tabs. 
You can also make a tab that takes you to the front page if you want. Now make a copy of the first slide and paste it so that it goes right below the first slide. Again, keep in mind that you are supposed to ignore the additional slides that popped up on my screen because those are completely useless. Make a copy of the line or the spiral, whatever you chose, and the grid paper or whatever type of paper you chose so that you can paste it onto the copy of the first slide that you just made. Before you paste it though, you'll need to delete all the post-it notes and the intro text and that page. Now move the first tab from the right side to the left side so that it looks like you flipped the page. You might need to move around the text a little bit before moving the tab from the right side to the left side, so just rearrange the text if you had to do that. Erase the month that was on the tab that you just moved, which would be July in my case, and then rewrite it on the tab that's on the left side. Make a copy of this slide, paste it, and then move it right under that slide. Basically, it means that you copy the second slide, paste it, and then move it under the second slide. If your slides start looking like this, and by this I mean when there's a little arrow on top of the number of your slide, then that is not good, but you can easily fix this by holding onto the slide and then swiping left like I'm showing here so that the arrow disappears. Repeat moving the tab to the left side for each of the slides. Remember, you need to copy each slide and then move the next tab over to the left. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Now we're going to be making the clickable tabs, for which you might need to move the text over, which is what I had to do. Then click on the tab, click link, link to slide, and then click on the slide number that's designated for that month. For example, July would be slide 2, August 3, September 4, and so on. Unfortunately, you will need to do this for every single slide and there is no easier way to do this. Unless you want your planner to not look as realistic and for all tabs to stay on the right hand side at all times, even when you're on that page. I recommend the process that I'm using right now because it looks a lot more realistic and it honestly doesn't take that long even though it looks like it would. As you just saw, I'm now adding the monthly calendar, for which I looked up monthly calendar on Safari and then saved the image that I like the best. You can also just copy and paste it, but I didn't like this look as much, so I ended up cropping it down in photos and then clicking the plus button, going to photo video, and then choosing from recents the photo that I just cropped and put that on the left hand side. Before you do any of this though, I actually recommend that before you even paste the calendar, you make a copy of this slide and put it below your last slide, so below slide 7 for me. I didn't do this yet, but I'm going to do this at the end, which takes a little bit more time. So again, I just completely recommend that before you change anything, you make a copy of that slide and then paste the calendar. As you can see, I also changed the color of the page to plain white, and now I'm adding lines to it for the notes. I'm copying and pasting the groups of lines so that this process is a little bit faster. And I don't know if you remember, but I told you in the beginning, if you touch something and then you touch another thing simultaneously, then you can hold multiple things or touch multiple things at once so that's what I did and then I grouped them and then copied and pasted groups of them like I said. Now I'm selecting multiple things again including all of the lines for the notes as well as the calendar and then I'm going to copy this and paste it onto slide number three. Again before you do this make sure you copy slide number three and put it all the way at the bottom of the slides. Of course repeat the entire process of copying and pasting each slide at the bottom and then also copying and pasting the calendar onto each of the slides. If you didn't copy and paste the slides like I told you to but didn't do in this video for some reason, then the process might be a little bit more tedious but don't worry it's not all that much difficult. All you're going to have to do is copy each of the slides so for example starting with July you would copy the second slide and then put it at the bottom so that would become slide number eight and then delete the calendar and the lines off of it and then change the background of the page by going into the paintbrush button and then going to fill and then images and then choosing the grid paper again and you're going to have to do that for each of the slides. Once you're done with all of that, click on the three dots on the upper right hand corner, export, PDF, export again, share, and then you can either put it into your files or you can just open it directly into GoodNotes. So I'm going to open it in GoodNotes. Click on the pencil with the circle around it. If you want to be able to click on the links that we created, by links I mean tabs obviously. Here you can't see what's happening because it's a screen recording, but just make sure that you click on each of the tabs and make sure that everything works. I wanted to leave my planner as is, but if you want to add the weekly setup that I showed you in the beginning of the video, then go to the plus button and add either the square or the square with the curved corners so that this will be the box for each day of the week. 
you can set this up however you want to if you want to create the top two dues box then all you have to do is split the square into two using the line shape and write down top two dues at the top of it like i said i wanted to leave my planner as is so i'm not going to be putting this into my planner but if you want to then make sure that you export your planner after doing this step also make sure to copy and paste all the boxes onto each of the slides that don't have the calendar on them now back in good notes click on the four squares on the top left hand side and rearrange your planner so that there is a weekly page after each of the monthly calendars since there are about four weeks per month you can duplicate each of the weekly pages after rearranging them three times this is what your planner should look like at this point. The last step is creating the sticky notes for which you'll need to go back into Keynote and copy the sticky note that we made on there and paste it in GoodNotes. You might need to crop it to make it fit exactly to the way it looks on GoodNotes. To use these sticky notes, you'll need to use the lasso tool and copy the sticky note and then paste it wherever you need it. And that is how you quickly make a digital planner. This can be personalized as much as you want, which is perfect because it can be used for college, school, work even, especially for college students because our classes are all over the place. Having a digital planner is great because we can make our planner suited to our schedule. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'll be making a ton of back to school content very soon. Click on this video now for more content like this.